Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. October 24th, 2017. The Cooner Report, presented by Kelly Financial Services. This is the Cooner Report. How do you spell vindication? K-U-H-N-E-R. My friends, I told everybody yesterday, Elizabeth Warren, Focahontas, is a liar. And I have now been completely vindicated. So, as you know, after yesterday, I publicly called out Chief Spreading Bull, saying that the story that she relayed to Chuck you, Chuck Todd on Meet the Mess was completely bogus. And if you remember, she is now part of, or she's trying to insert herself into this hashtag MeToo campaign that is uh, going viral on social media uh, in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein scandal, in which now all these women are claiming they were sexually harassed. So what did Elizabeth Warren do? She wanted to play the victim herself. She wanted to take advantage of the Harvey Weinstein scandal to help her score political points and shamelessly get votes. And so she relayed the story to Chuck Todd, whereby she says that when she was at a law school, she didn't name it, we now know it's the University of Houston Law School, she was being chased around by a professor. Listen to what she said on Chuck You, Chuck Todd, Meet the Mess, pre-recorded segment on Sunday. Roll it, Brittany. Yes, I have a Me Too story, too. I was a baby law professor and so excited to have my first real teaching job. And there was a senior faculty member who, you know, would tell dirty jokes and make comments about my appearance and... One day he asked me if I would stop by his office, which I didn't think much about, and I did. And he slammed the door and lunged for me. It was like a bad cartoon. He's chasing me around the desk, trying to get his hands on me. And I kept saying, you don't want to do this. You, you don't want to do this. I have little children at home. Please don't do this. And trying to talk calmly. And at the same time, what was flickering through my brain is... If he gets hold of me, I'm going to punch him right in the face. (laughs) She's a liar. She's a liar. And what happened was this. After I called her out yesterday, and I said this on the air, I will stake my reputation. I'm her public enemy number one. She can finish me right here, right now. Just come out and admit the truth. Show me the evidence. And what happened was they went into furious spin control mode. They called up the Boston Globe, and they put out now this bogus alternative story. So here now is the real story. According now to the people at the University of Houston Law School, the person that she was talking about was Professor Eugene Smith, otherwise known, he went by Gene Smith. He was a close friend of Elizabeth Warren. In fact, they were friends pretty much his entire life. Not only were they close friends, but now listen to this. She spoke at a memorial service after he passed away nearly two decades later. And the story that she told at the memorial service in 1997 was radically different than the story she tells Chuck you Chuck Todd 20 years later. At the memorial service, she was laughing as she was recounting the story to the people in the audience, eulogizing Gene Smith, saying he was a great man, he was a great professor, he was her mentor, that he was with her every step of the way in his career. She testified to his character, to uh, what uh, his moral integrity. And then she recounted a story, laughing as she said it, that Professor Smith and her were engaged in horseplay at the office, 
where he was pretending to whatever chase after her and she was pretending to be uh you know i have little children please don't touch me it was all a game and not only was it all a game she was laughing at the time giggling with professor smith and here's the kicker he suffered from polio let me repeat that he suffered from polio he was in a wheelchair the guy couldn't use his legs and he could barely use his arms so how could he be chasing her around the desk when the guy's in a freaking wheelchair and if it was such a horrific event why was she laughing with him giggling with him about it as it was taking place and then why was she laughing about it and giggling about it tw uh, whatever after he passed away in 1997 when she was then a harvard law professor my friends let me tell you what she did she lied and she lied about her dead disabled friend her mentor in order to shamelessly get votes that's who this woman is and in fact the discrepancies in her stories are so huge and so immense listen now to how the boston globe has to try to desperately spin this for the chief they got a ho ho for focahontas they're now in absolute overdrive. So listen now to this. The guy who she remained friends with his entire life. The guy who was, had polio was in a wheelchair. The guy who numerous witnesses at the University of Houston said, yeah, we all knew about it. He liked to horseplay like that. He, that's, that was the game. We're all playing around. We almost felt pity for the guy because the guy was, you know, he was in a wheelchair. He couldn't move his legs. He couldn't move his arms barely. It was a gag. She laughed at the time, and at the memorial service, she was laughing and giggling about the whole story. So, how do you spin a lie and try to make it somehow have any scintilla of truth in it? Listen now to this, because the globe is in furious spin mode. The contrasting accounts, here's directly from their front page story in today's globe, would appear to highlight the evolution notice the word now evolution of warren's approach to dealing with the episode that evolution took place amid changing attitudes about harassment and increasing empowerment of people to speak up in other words it's she's evolving now she's evolving uh it was a joke at the time the guy was in a wheelchair so I guess he couldn't be chasing her around the desk, but let that go. If she was uncomfortable, she could have walked out of the office any time because the guy's in a wheelchair. He's got polio. She's cracking jokes about it at the time. She's cracking jokes about it at the memorial service. And nobody ever heard of this somehow being an issue of sexual harassment till Elizabeth Warren did Chuck You, Chuck Todd on Meet the Mess on Sunday. Because now she has to try to insert herself in the middle of this story and play for votes herself. Then all of a sudden, the context changed. Then, well, it's an evolution now. Now it's an evolution. Now it's, you see, it was a joke then, and she continued to joke about it, and she actually thought about it fondly, and she stayed very close with him, even though he allegedly harassed her. They were still very close. And she had to go speak at his eulogy. By the way, he was known in many ways as an arrogant, obnoxious liberal. A lot of faculty members didn't like him. They thought he was arrogant. They thought he was obnoxious. They thought he was condescending. Many of them didn't show up at his own funeral. They didn't show up at his memorial service, which begs the question. If this guy allegedly harassed Elizabeth Warren, why the hell did you... She was then at Harvard, making $350,000 a year teaching one course, pretending to be a phony Indian, if you remember. So... Why go half a continent away, fly half a continent to Houston to eulogize a man who allegedly, and you're telling jokes and what a great guy he was, if this guy had allegedly sexually harassed you the way you described it on Chuck You, Chuck Todd. 
Because what she told Chuck U, Chuck Todd, was, I was shocked. I was stunned. I was shocked. I was hurt. I was reeling. I wish I had said more then. I wish I had spoken up. But I only have the courage now in the wake of the Donald Trump presidency and Harvey Weinstein and everybody's wearing their pee hats now. And I just want to speak up now on female empowerment because I'm a victim too. You have no idea what I lived through. They were friends, colleagues, and buddies. She stayed in contact with him after she left the University of Houston. In fact, at the memorial service, she didn't just recount that story, saying that's the kind of guy Gene was. We would kid around in the office. Ha, 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 ha. Listen to this story. Here's another story. To show you, this is the guy that's chasing her around the desk. Okay? Listen to this. So she told of another story at the memorial service. Professor Gene Smith ordered a steak at the faculty lounge. They had lunch. And then pushed the plate in front of Warren when it arrived, telling her to uh, cut it up for him. Quote, can't you see I'm a cripple? Quote, unquote, he said. Elizabeth Warren's response. Sure, but I thought you knew that when you ordered the steak. Ha, 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 ha. She laughed as she said it at the memorial service. Everybody in the audience laughed as well. She was there saying, I'm going to miss him. I love Gene. He was my friend. He was my buddy. He was my mentor. We had great laughs together. Fast forward 20 years. He's dead. I need to make up a story to make myself look like a victim. <gasps> I know what I'll do. I'll go after my dead, disabled, crippled friend. That's what I'll do. The guy who's dead, who can't defend himself, who was in a wheelchair, and who was disabled. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And I'll say, he chased me, and chased me, and chased me, and all I'm thinking is, oh my God, if he grabs me and assaults me from that wheelchair, I'm just going to punch him right in the face. She's a liar. She's a liar. And like I said at the beginning of this monologue, how do you spell vindication? K-U-H-N-E-R. And if I'm now Jeff Deal... And if I'm the Republican Party, you want a scandal, you want to go after Elizabeth Warren, here it is on a silver platter. But let me ask all of you this. Ultimately, are you really surprised? Because if nobody else has the guts to say it, I'm going to say it. She's a pathological, incorrigible liar. She lies even when she doesn't need to lie. She lied about her Native American ancestry to get a job at Harvard. She has lied about shilling for Wall Street and the big banks and the insurance companies. She has lied about her wealth. She says she's part of the 99%. No, she's got a mansion in Cambridge. She's worth north of $15 million. She's been claiming that she's been fighting for the little guy her entire tenure in the Senate. In fact, she's been hawking books, selling books, and giving paid speeches, lining her pockets every step of the way. In other words, she talks like Bernie, but she acts like Hillary. And now she's been caught in another mother lie. My question to you is this. It's the Cooner Country poll question De jour, as the French would say, of the day, sponsored by Bill Kelly Financial Services. Did Elizabeth Warren lie about being sexually harassed? If you believe like me, <laughs> six ways to Sunday she did. Text the letter A to 68680. If you believe, no, Jeff, this is just a simple evolution now. This is, she didn't take it seriously before. But now, in this age of uh, sexual harassment and in female empowerment, now she realizes just how bad the event was 30-some uh, years ago. In other words, no. Text a letter B to 680-680. 
As always, you can vote online at WRKO.com. More with your calls next. Uh, 1226 here on the great WRKO. Okay, you can text us at 680, 680. The Chief, just as I said yesterday, I hate to do a victory lap, but really, honestly, it was so obvious yesterday. Now been caught completely lying about her experience allegedly being sexually harassed. She basically lied about a dead, disabled friend, a law professor mentor, to shamelessly get votes. Uh, you can text us, by the way, 680, 680. This is from 781. Jeff, Elizabeth was going to punch a polio victim in a wheelchair in the face. <laughs> By the way, how does a guy with polio <laughs> lunge at a woman, lunge at Elizabeth Warren if the guy's in a wheelchair? How's he chasing her around the desk? <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're going to lie, I mean, I understand politicians are liars, and I, I know she's a Democrat and a moonbat, but I mean, come on. I mean, if you're going to lie, for God's sakes. At least be a smart liar. Um, this is from 617. Jeff, I think she was running around doing her war dance. <laughs> Let's go to Al in Boston. Go ahead, Al. Jeff, my friend, this is your good friend, Abdul Ahmed <laughs> Been too long, Jeff. Jeff, I have to tell you something. I hurt my foot, and I was in Cambridge at coffee shop. Elizabeth Warren chased me around table. <laughs> she wanted to grope me, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you for that call, Al. Uh, here's a here's another text. This is from five zero eight. Jeff, that guy, that's yeah, Professor Eugene Smith, had to be blind as a bat to chase her around the room. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> I mean, take your pick. Either he's in a wheelchair or the guy's like in crutches, you know, like lunging at her. <laughs> I, 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 I swear that the, the BS, the BS. Uh, let's go to CJ in Boston. Go ahead, CJ. Yeah, she was just surfing the wagon. But uh, go easy on the chief. Seriously now, Jeff. I'm voting for Jeff Deal. And there are many reasons why. But I would be willing to to donate a thousand dollars to Elizabeth Warren's campaign if she allows me to pay me to pay for a DNA test to prove her native heritage. And I'm serious about that. Oh, you're never going to see that DNA test, CJ, and I'll tell you why. Because I have more Cherokee blood potentially in me than her. I'm telling you, maybe some of my ancestors 400 years ago may have done a trip to North America. <laughs> Who knows? Had a baby with somebody. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have more of a chance to be a Native American Cherokee than her. So, and this is what I find incredible. Look how the local media covers up for her. Like, no matter what happens now, I'm telling you, you think I'm going to let this thing go? Even if she manages to win next year, they think they're going to get away with this in 2020? That she openly, well, never mind that she lied about, you know, her Native American heritage, that she's part of the 1%, that she's got a $3 million mansion in Cambridge, that she's worth north of $15 million, that she was a shill taking a payout after payout, a payment after payment from Wall Street, the big banks, the big insurance companies, but that you openly lied about your dead, disabled, forgive me, crippled friend? And you try to use that to score cheap political points and shamelessly get votes? Like, you honestly think this is not going to come back to haunt you? Please, please, if she manages to win next year, please nominate her in 2020. Trump will destroy her. Let's take it to Jackie Murphy in the newsroom. 1238 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, now, um, speaking of sexual harassment, we now know that Liar Watha, Focahontas, lied when she claimed that she was sexually harassed. We now know the name. Professor Eugene Smith at Houston University Law School. She's now been completely unmasked as a liar. 
The question now is, what about Bill O'Reilly? As you know, he is now in the center of the storm. Uh, over the weekend, the New York Times published another hit piece on him, this time documenting not just the six women over the years that he made payouts to, $13 million in settlements, but the big one to Fox News legal analyst Liz Wheel. And according to the New York Times, they say that O'Reilly paid her, out of his own money, $32 million. $32 million to get a apparently an allegation of non-consensual sexual harassment out of the way. This was done in January, and then about a month later, Fox News, or in particular their parent company, signed up Bill O'Reilly for a four-year, $100 million deal. But of course, a couple months later, after other allegations surfaced, they eventually pushed him out. And so Bill O'Reilly is now fighting back. He now says that this is a witch hunt, that this is the New York Times out to get him. And as all of this is taking place, Megyn Kelly herself weighed in on her show saying, well, when Bill O'Reilly went on CBS News on one of their morning shows and said that nobody had ever complained to human resources about his sexual behavior or inappropriate behavior, that's just not true because she says she complained. Roll it. Brittany. However, O'Reilly's suggestion that no one ever complained about his behavior is false. I know because I complained. This is not unique to Fox News. Women everywhere are used to being dismissed, ignored, or attacked when raising complaints about men in authority positions. They stay silent so often out of fear. Fear of ending their careers, fear of lawyers, yes, and often fear of public shaming, including through the media. Well, O'Reilly answered by releasing three letters. He answered by releasing three private letters that were written to him. In fact, they were handwritten. Two were from Kelly Megan, and one was from Gretchen Carlson. You remember her? She's the one that really started the dominoes going after Roger Ailes. She basically got a huge settlement. And that encouraged or emboldened other women to speak out against Roger Ailes. Other people at Fox News brought the downfall of Roger Ailes, the downfall of Bill O'Reilly, the downfall of one of the co-presidents, Bill Shine. And really now Fox News has been changed, I think, in alter, uh, irrevocably, but let that go. Here is now uh, the letters that were released. I got them right in front of me, thanks to the Independent. They were the ones who were able to, uh, had the guts to run them. It's got Megyn Kelly, is, it's even got the letterhead, Megyn Kelly on it. And here's what she wrote Bill O'Reilly. So if he was this sexist pig that she claims, this is a very bizarre letter then. Quote, Dear Bill, what a class act you are coming to my baby shower. I was truly touched. I know how busy you are, especially that time of day. I, it meant a lot to me and Doug. And thank you for the darling bodysuits and snuggly. It's hard to believe we'll soon have a little human being in our lives, tiny enough to fit in there. You've become a dear friend, uh, in parentheses, no matter what you say, and I am grateful to have you in my life. Megan and Doug. Then came a second letter. Bill. Thanks for the plug on Doug's book. I guess he plugged her husband's book. I realize you didn't have to do that, especially after mentioning it already. I appreciate how supportive you have been of me over the years here at Fox News Channel. You are a true friend and mentor. X-O-X-O. -X -O. Megan. Now... Am I the only one that finds this letter a little bit bizarre? So, if he was sexually harassing you, if he was behaving inappropriately, if you claim, again, she's trying to insert herself like Elizabeth Warren, 
into the middle of this story because, let's be candid, her ratings are tanking. Nobody's watching her show. In fact, she had to do this ridiculous dance act with one of these other people on, on NBC News to uh, before she even made out her statement because now she's doing anything. Now she's... Uh, she's dancing, she's doing somersaults, she's doing cartwheels, she's doing celebrity interviews. If you told her to take her clothes off and do some kind of a striptease act, she would, just to get the ratings up. Because her show is imploding as we speak. So now she has to try to revive her career by somehow, again, playing herself up as some kind of a victim. Put herself in the center of the story. But I'm looking at this letter, again where I know I appreciate how supportive you have been of me over the years here at Fox News Channel. You are a true friend and mentor. X-O-X-O, Megan. Now, maybe I'm old school. Maybe it's me, and maybe some of the women out there can help me on this. But you're talking about a woman who's married with a little baby, And not only are you going on in a private note, how great he is, what a great friend he is, what a great mentor, but then you sign off XOXO? I got to tell you, when I saw that last night, I'm like, whoa, whoa. Is she flirting with him? Um, I don't know. Did they have some kind of maybe a relationship? I'm looking at this. He obviously released this letter for a reason. He's the one that released it. And at a minimum, at a minimum, it shows her, again, to be a complete hypocrite, phony, and fraud. Here's the letter from Gretchen Carlson. Bill, thank you for being the calm in the sea. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you for being my friend. It means the world to me, Gretchen Carlson. So even she in private was at least saying he was a good guy. Now... When the New York Times interviewed Bill O'Reilly, the interview was over. They thought, basically, they thought it was done. However, O'Reilly continued to speak. And they both had their iPhones, and they kept recording. And he utterly lashes out at the two New York Times reporters. Listen now to the explosive audio. Roll it, Brittany. Why don't you be human beings once? This is horrible. It's horrible what I went through. Horrible what my family went through. This is crap. And you know it. It's politically and financially motivated. And we can prove it with with shocking information. But I'm not going to sit there in a courtroom for, for a year and a half and let my kids get beaten up every single day of their lives by a tabloid press who would sit there. And you know it. I mean, I got to tell you, I'm listening to him. I'm listening to all of this. And now he's telling CNN and he's telling others that he's angry at God. That's what now Bill O'Reilly is saying. He's angry at God for the sexual harassment allegations that he says now destroyed his career. Well, you can be angry at God all you want. The fact of the matter is you have to answer, I think, one seminal question. Did you pay Liz Wheel $32 million? That's the set, that's the heart of the New York Times story. If you paid $32 million, then don't tell me it wasn't for sexual harassment. Nobody pays $32 million out of the goodness of their heart. I'm sorry. So the allegation was that he engaged in inappropriate behavior and non-consexual, a non-consexual sexual relationship. That's exactly what the allegation that she leveled against him said. So either you paid the $32 million or you didn't pay the $32 million. Now, if you didn't pay the $32 million, then obviously it's a witch hunt and a complete fabrication and a smear and a slander. However, if you did pay the $32 million, I'll tell you this, I'm not going to pay anybody a dollar, never mind $32 million, just so that a lawsuit's going to go away. I understand he was a big, you know, he was a, he was a real hot shot at Fox News. He was a big time celebrity. Uh, he was a big target. I get that. But still, 
if there's smoke, there's some fire. And so did you pay the $32 million or did you not pay the $32 million? Because if you paid the $32 million, then you're, that's not just, oh, this is a frivolous lawsuit. I just want it to go away. $32 million is $32 million. That's some serious coin, as they say. Okay, those are some serious clams. That's a lot of moolah. So I think that's the issue that he keeps skirting. Now, on the larger issue, to me, I understand you want to protect your children, but to me, there's nothing more important than your good name. If you've got the evidence that he says, shocking evidence, how all of this was politically and financially motivated, Bill, listen, man, you're in your 60s. You've made your money. You've made your career. At this point, let the chips fall where they may. Take them all down. Unless you've got things you're embarrassed of, ashamed of, and you don't want your kids to hear about. And so I've got to tell you, I know he's going on Glenn Beck. I know he wants to go back on Sean Hannity. I know he wants to go after the liberal media. And believe me, I hate the New York Times. They actually did a front page expose on me years ago when I broke the Obama Muslim story. I broke it wide open when I was at the Washington Times' sister publication, Insight. And everything in that story was practically false or a half-truth or a lie. So I know the New York Times are the New York slimes. I get that. But did you pay the 32 mil or did you not pay the 32 mil? That, to me, is the question. And then I just want to ask everybody this other question. Why is the media so obsessed with the sexual, alleged sexual harassment of Bill O'Reilly? Yet when it came to a alleged rapist like Bill Clinton, nothing. Ben Affleck, nothing. George Clooney, nothing. For decades, Harvey Weinstein, nothing. Jeffrey Epstein, nothing. In other words... If you're a liberal or a Democrat, they don't give a damn. It's free pass after free pass after free pass. But if you're any kind of a conservative or a non-liberal in the media, it is open season. Did Bill O'Reilly engage in sexual harassment? Do you think he paid off Liz Wheel and Megyn Kelly? Is this the end of Kelly Megan? She now says that she spoke out against him, but the letters tell a very different story. 617-266-6868. Is she now going to become the Elizabeth Warren of the mainstream media? A, 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 a liar and a proven liar to boot. What of the human beings? This is horrible. It's horrible. Horrible what I went through. Horrible what my family went through. This is crap. And you know it. It's politically and financially motivated. And we can prove it. 1257 here on the great WRKO. Okay, Bill O'Reilly swinging at the two New York reporters, New York Times reporters, um, after they broke their story alleging that he paid off Liz Wheel, Fox News analyst then, a legal analyst, $32 million dollars to allegedly have a allegation of non-consensual sexual relationship, go away, whatever that means. Is this the end of Bill O'Reilly? Do you believe him? Or do you think this is another smear job by the New York Slimes? Let's go to Paul in Woburn. Go ahead, Paul. Jeff, this is Paul, originally from Somerville. You're not giving me enough time, but O'Reilly's program went downhill. He could have had people like you on. He could have had uh, the guy who's from New Hampshire who fills in for Michael Savage. What's his name? I can't remember. He, he, uh, Sean Hannity has him on. He had terrible guests. And, but the thing is, the old expression, right where you work, that's not where you fool around. And I don't know who he had for legal advice. $32 million? Are you kidding me? There's actually poor women who are subjected to a lot worse, who never get one penny. And shame on the New York Times and all these liberals who have gone after O'Reilly. But O'Reilly, he lost credibility. He went from bullying from bullying these women. Now he's playing the victim, okay? So I do have some empathy for him, but at the same time, I don't know who was advising him. 
you don't mess around in the office place. If he's that sexually repressed and frustrated, maybe he should lie down on a couch and get some help. But these women are also claiming they're victims, and like you said, they're using that the oldest weapon that women have against men, and it's happened to better men than O'Reilly, by the way. They've used the sexuality to get money out of people, and God knows what he actually did. What, he dressed up like a fox, and she dressed up like a rabbit behind closed doors? Who knows? <laughs> well, that's the thing. Who knows? Uh, look, honestly, that's why I come in. Brittany can testify to this. I come in, I do my job, and I go home. That's it. I've only got eyes for my wife. <laughs> That's one of the secrets to Jeff Cooner's staying power. Okay, the feud now between Trump and Corker goes into hyperdrive. It's now all-out war. That story, next. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's one o'clock.